Hi everybody, I'm back answering your scuba diving questions. Welcome to Scuba Diving Magazine and welcome to Ask Mark, uh, which is a scuba diving Q&A. It's a weekly thing. If you have any scuba diving questions, pop them down in the comments below and use the Ask Mark hashtag to get featured in an up and coming Q&A. Um, it might take some time because I've got a few of these in the bank, so you might have to wait a few weeks, but I'll do my best to actually type out your answers uh, if I do have time. Uh, this week I'm answering questions about BCD cleaning, uh, the best sort of practices. Pelly cases good old petty cases, uh, cold water gloves, long hose routing options, and computer comparisons. Let's dive straight in with the first question. Which this week comes from Ulf, and Ulf says, after cleaning my BCD's bladder, I always keep my dump valve screwed off to let it dry inside. Should I store my BCD with the valve screwed in or off? Thanks for the amazing videos and safe diving. Yes, indeed. Um, so cleaning your, uh, your BCD and, uh, and you flushed out the, uh, all of the nasties and all that kind of stuff. Should you leave the, um, uh, the dump valves off? Because these, if you didn't know, you can just unscrew these usually. Um, there are some exceptions, but most of them, yeah, you just unscrew them by hand. And it, it is quite good to, to get in that um, like habit to make sure that you're checking this um, uh, the ceiling surface, there's no like debris or, uh, or salt buildup on it. Um, the benefits of leaving them off, I suppose the actual ceiling surface isn't going to, can I, yeah, uh, the ceiling surface isn't going to bed in quite as much. You might be able to see on that one if I get the light just right, um, that it's, it's bedding in a little bit, um, but these are pretty easy to, uh, to replace. They're normally a lot larger. Uh, the Scooby Pro ones seem to be quite small. Um, but personally, I leave them on, mainly because when my BCDs are in storage, if I like to basically keep a little bit of air inside of it, so the inside of the, um, of the bladder doesn't touch itself, because if it's touching itself and there is some small amount of moisture, then of course the moisture sticks between the two and then it literally sticks the two sometimes and it can corrode that one area. Whereas if you actually inflate the BCD, not completely, but just a little bit, uh, then you don't have that problem. And of course, if you've taken the dump valve off, then you can't inflate it. So personally, I'll leave mine on. The risk of it bedding in is far less than on a second stage and the, uh, the, the actual ceiling surface. <sighs> I don't know if I've ever seen a ceiling surface need like proper replacing because they they are quite chunky. Um, they they're pretty tough. The uh, the BCD ceilings, um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. So yeah, personally, I leave them screwed on. Um, just make sure that when you're putting them back on, what I normally do is I unscrew it a complete rotation, just to make sure that the screw threads are lining up first. So you unscrew it until you hear it go click and then screw it into the BCD so that your, your threads aren't cross threading. It's, it's gonna go nice and smooth. It should go on like just with loose fingers. You shouldn't have to wrench it on. If you're wrenching it, then you could be damaging it. So just finger tight and it should be fine. But yeah, I always leave mine attached. Uh, this is a spare by the way, and that's why I've got it out. Cougar560427 says, I'm leaning towards going with a Pelican case. Thoughts, uh, cheers from Canada. Uh, Pelly cases, yeah, Pelly cases are into the nuts, basically. Um, they're not the cheapest, uh, but if you can afford it, yeah, uh, Pelly case is a real strong contender. Um, it's very, it's, it's probably the best out there to protect fragile things. I mean, I wouldn't be keeping my, my wetsuit and my fins in a Pelly case, that's a bit extravagant, uh, but like, cameras and uh, and stuff like that yeah e even regulators they're pretty tough so i wouldn't worry too much about it um but yeah like delicate fragile stuff electricals as well then yeah then they could go quite nicely in a in a pelly case uh one thing that i would note is um i think most of them do nowadays but just make sure that they have a pressure release valve because if you take pelly cases on airplanes and they go in the hold, then the, the change in pressure, because it's a sealed surface, it used to mean that you couldn't physically open up the case after the flight because it had dropped the pressure and it created a vacuum on the inside, so then you couldn't actually open the darn case. Uh, nowadays, they have little pressure release valves in them so that you can just push a button after the flight. It, 
it breathes and then you can open it up. But yeah, they, they are great. They are really, really tough. Uh, you see a lot of the top industry guys and girls who have like real fine uh, machinery and stuff, they tend to use them. And um, yeah, as I said, they're, they're not the cheapest, but for a reason, the good stuff tends to be quite expensive. Um, I, I've got some cutting, I've got some little ones. Uh, the big ones are a bit outside of my price range. Uh, I've got some little ones for smaller bits and bobs. I don't know where it's gone. Um, but um, yeah, no, pelly cases are pretty darn good. Sune Groen Bake. Uh, if I butchered your name, I apologize. Uh, I'll just call you Sune if that's even correct. Um, but Sune says, I would like some thought on improving finger dexterity with gloves in 10 degrees Celsius or below. I'm having trouble refitting my mask and dis uh, disconnecting the dry suit hose using five mil gloves. Yeah, clunky gloves yeah, can be quite tough. You do kind of get used to it uh, the more you do it. Diving here in the UK, yeah, five mil gloves are, are a staple. Uh, but my recommendation would be dry gloves. Um, because, I mean, this is a waterproof Ultima dry glove system. This is what attaches onto my dry suit. And, um, and yeah, with this, you can pick and choose the actual dry glove. So it acts a lot like a dry suit, but just for your hands. And with these, these are actually QB uh, gloves. I've got QB dry glove rings on a different dry suit and I, I, I pinch the uh, the glove and use them on this one. And um, yeah, very, very thin. I think these are 1.6 mil thick, and then you get an under glove, just a very thin um, glove underneath it, that acts a bit like a undersuit for your, uh, for your hand. And then, yeah, it's like wearing a pair of two mil gloves, and they're even warmer than a five mil. So it's, it's a good, um, a good option for dexterity. And if you need something a bit tougher, then you can swap this glove out for something different. Uh, if you don't want to dive with the gloves, then you still have your cuff ring system on your dry suit. If you're diving with a, um, a wetsuit, you can get some dry glove systems. Scuba Pro did one a few years back. Um, and I forgot the name of them. I've got a set of blue gloves. Ugh. Where you basically have the glove itself and then you have a latex cuff seal built into it. Um, the, the first one goes on really easy, um, but then trying to fit the, uh, the second one by yourself is a bit of a pain. So you do need a tender, a, a second person to, uh, to come along. God, my hands grow. It's truth. To, um, uh, to help you put that second glove on. But yeah, that effectively creates, and you can see how it's bulging up, uh, a completely airtight system on your hand. Does mean that you do get a bit of squeeze uh, if you're diving down deep. So it's best to keep a fair amount of that air pressure inside of it. And then when you're actually under the water and you go down when it's compressing down, it's not quite as much or it doesn't vacuum pack your hand in. But that's an option if you're diving with a wetsuit, you get a separate system, but do be prepared for some squeeze uh, if you're diving down deep. But yeah, dry gloves would be my, um, uh, my instinct. Otherwise I did uh, for at least a season, I, um, I dived with a pair of old five mil gloves and I cut the fingertips off and then wore three mil gloves underneath that. So my fingertips had three mil, but the rest of my hand was five mil. So I still had that like thermal protection, but on the very fingertips, I just had like three mil. Um, so that could be an option. Um, yeah, one, one of those two uh, sort of ways would, um, would be, so yeah, find a, a cheap pair of five mil gloves, just cut the, uh, the very fingertips off, and then you can still have your, uh, your dexterity for the, the little fiddly things, but wear like three mil gloves underneath it. Sune goes on to say, is it worth it buying an old air integrated dive computer as in 2008, 2010? I guess maybe a review on old computers, pros and cons, uh, best and absolute worst, uh, transmitter compatibility. Uh, thanks for all your inspiration, Sune, on the Faro Islands. Um, 2008, 2010 wireless air integration. That's kind of when it like started. Um, You'll probably find a few Suntos around that age. You're looking at um, 
uh, like Hilo 2s. Um, and the D, no, oh, that's a DX. Uh, D4 doesn't, D6 doesn't, but then they brought out the D4i, the I standard for integrated, uh, and the D6, the D6i. Um, the, the Hilo 2 uh, did, yeah, that connected to a, a wireless air transmitter. Otherwise, maybe some of the oceanics of the time, something pelagic, uh, but yeah, 2008 to 2010, I think that's when like wireless air integration really started to begin and uh, and come out. But trying to get hold of a computer, I mean, one thing that you'll note of these computers is that yeah, the straps, especially the uh, the elastomer, elastomer straps, they degrade um, since then. I mean, this D4, I think I got this in 2009. Um, and yeah, the, the, the straps have just disintegrated and you need to make sure that you can get replacement parts for that. So that would be my main worry about getting older tech, especially over like seven years old, because trying to get replacement parts for them can be a bit sketchy. Um, as far as like good and bad wireless air integration. So there, there are kind of two types. You get a simple, wireless air transmitter, which is just a, uh, a beacon. And a lot of the older Sunto computers use that beacon style. And what you'd have to do is at the beginning of every dive, you go into it and you'd have to go into the menu and you basically have to, you, you switch the tank on and then the transmitter would broadcast a pairing signal for the first like one or two minutes. You'd have to be on your computer nearby it and you'd have to like catch that pairing signal and then lock that into your computer. And hopefully no one else on the boat was uh, doing that pairing at the exact same time because you might get crossed signals. Um, and then every now and then it might need to be uh, repaired. Whereas now a lot of the, the Suntos, they, um, they, they use the Sunto tank pod it's a more expensive version of the uh, the transmitter, but it's a permanent pairing. You type in the transmitter uh, serial number into the computer and it's permanently paired. Uh, a lot of the Pelagic ones, Pelagic used to be owned by Oceanic, now they're owned by Aqualung, but Shearwater use them as well. Uh, and they're permanent pairing, which I much prefer, is much more civilized. Um, otherwise, yeah, there, there's so many out there. Uh, Maras do some, Scuba Pro. Uh, yeah, quite a few of them have their own transmitters nowadays. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't go too old. Um, older tech. Older tech is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with the um, the things from new. But yeah, as it gets older, yeah, I had to replace the uh, the boots on this. And, uh, and this is just a, um, uh, what you call it? Uh, a non-branded boot for the uh, for the Hilo 2. Uh, the, the D4i, I have no idea where those straps, they're just gone. The DX, that's less old. That's probably like 2015, 2016 maybe. And uh, and the, the, the straps have come off of that. And um, yeah, the, the, the D6 has a metal bracelet, so that's not degrading anywhere but uh, yeah just replacement parts can be trickier as they discontinue models so do be like conscious of that shemek s says hi mark cento d5 or eon core almost the same price and i don't really care about the size or some kind of smartwatch features you can also hear a lot about battery life of d5 uh, which would be better to choose i'm thinking that maybe one day to go further for a tech diver um so D5 versus the Eon Core, either the battery thing, they're both rechargeable batteries and you'll, you'll hear the exact same complaints on, um, on the Eon Core. I think the D5 has a slightly better battery life just because it's a smaller screen and the, there's less drain on the battery. Of course, yeah, you can wear it uh, day to day. Otherwise, I think it's whether, and, and I think you've kind of answered this question, whether you want to go down more the free diving route or the like rebreather route, because the D5 watch size computers tend to have free diving, like snorkeling choices on them. Whereas the larger screens 
don't the larger screens tend to have like rebreather features and i think you do have that on the on the eon core it's probably going to be like fixed uh, ppo2 but you can still have like a rebreather mode on the eon core so that would probably be the direction that i'd urge you towards uh, otherwise yeah they're pretty similar on the inside obviously the um uh, the D5 has the like surface side of things where I think it can connect to your smartphone and all that kind of stuff, which I know you've already said that you're, you're not interested in, but it's got all of those kind of features, which obviously the, uh, the Eon Core doesn't, both rechargeable. Um, I think D5 has a greater maximum depth, but you're talking between 80 meters for the Eon Core and 100 meters for the D5. Um, otherwise, yeah, you, you probably got more display options on the on the Eon Core as well. The the D5, I think, has like one dive screen, whereas on the Eon Core you can have like just the numbers or you can have the the fancy circle details. And I think they brought out a new one um, fairly recently. So yeah, I'd probably lean more towards Eon Core. And I think it can pair with more transmitters as well, which is quite cool. Um, so yeah, I'd probably lean down that road as opposed to the uh, the D5. But um, once you're actually inside and uh, like algorithms and things, I think they're pretty similar on the inside. And that's it for another week. Uh, good questions as always, but if you have any interesting scuba diving questions, pop them down in the uh, comments below. Use that AskMark hashtag. Doesn't have to be particularly interesting, but if you're just, if you're trying to make a decision between one or two or different things, uh, maybe I can help make that decision. Um, if you don't understand a certain aspect about scuba diving or something, then yeah, I can help hopefully explain it in my way. Uh, I used to teach scuba diving. I don't do it quite so much anymore, except to you lovely people. Um, but yeah, if there's anything that you're unsure on, please pop it down in the, in the comments below. Use the Ask Mark hashtag and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, another thing is, if you could, we've got a new digital version of our um, uh, scuba diver magazine. So we do a print magazine, we do a digital magazine, um, and we also do a, a new like light version. If you visit app.scubadivermag.com, yeah, we've got a couple versions or at least one um, like previous version of the magazine up there. It's a new platform. We're just testing it out. We'd love it if you guys could test it out for us. Let us know if you come across any like weird roadblocks or issues with it. And, um, and yeah, it is basically a digital magazine that you can get on your phone. You can read it on the go and uh, yeah, you, you can scroll through it. You can read the article you can go backwards and forwards it's a it's a new platform and we basically want you guys to, to test it out for us so yeah visit app.scubadiveatmag.com see how it works and uh, if you do come across any issues or problems please let us know that's it for this week thanks for watching everybody and of course safe diving <laughs>